<laughs> what is going on everybody welcome back to the channel today we're going to be focused on one specific bed of fish in fact it's a bed of fish that was a part of the rescue from the dumpster just address something real quick a lot of people commented on that video people that don't watch my channel saying that I fake the video I don't ever fake the videos and if I was going to I would let you know it was for entertainment purposes only I truly got a call from someone who said that they found a bag of betta fish in a dumpster behind a pet store and when I showed up that's what I got they asked me not to film I'm on multiple Facebook and next door groups where I talk about how I will rescue fish if people find fish that are in danger or need new homes for them. That's how this person contacted me. And you know, listen, haters gonna hate. And if uh, you feel like it was fake, well, okay, that's fine, whatever. I mean, it's not gonna, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. I got the bed of fish, they came from a dumpster and they're all thriving. We're gonna look at all of those today, but one specific one, the very first one that's gonna be rehomed is getting rehomed in this video today because we are gonna give it an epic new home in the fish room. It is going to get the most modern and beautiful home that it could possibly ever want since the only thing it's ever known is the inside of a plastic bag and the inside of a plastic bin. So come along with us today. Let's get this tank set up and let's get this beautiful little bed of fish into its new home. So let's go in and go ahead and get this tank started right now. So I'll pick you back up in the fish room. All right, guys, well, we are back with all of our materials to set up this new modern Betta Aquarium. And yes, it is in fact Betta, B-E-T-T-A, not Beta, it is Betta. So I know I'm gonna get comments, cause I always do, but it is beta, not beta, beta. But if you wanna pronounce it beta, that's up to you. Phonetically, it's incorrect, but that's okay. This is going to be an absolute epic modern aquarium. And we actually went and picked up this new aquarium right here that you're gonna see what makes it modern in a little bit. We wanna make it a little even more modern. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna frost this glass with some window tint that is frosted. And that's gonna give it a nice little aesthetic. And we wanna clean this glass down really well before we get ready to lay this film down. So you just spray this stuff directly on the glass and use a paper towel and start cleaning and wiping away. And it's gonna take away all of that junk and debris off of this, making it perfect for this film. And then we're gonna come back with a razor blade and we're just gonna make sure that everything is off. All right, guys. Well, we are ready to scape this modern Beta Aquarium right here. And we're going to be using some basic elements to scape this entire setup to give it a nice modern look. We're going to start with my absolute favorite substrate, and that is some pool filter sand. The reason I like pool filter sand is... It is a silica-based sand. It's not overly dirty when you put it in your tank. And you can get this stuff for about $10 for a 50-pound bag. You go to Petco, you buy silica-based aquarium sand. 50 pounds is going to cost you an entire mortgage payment. Now, honestly, 5 pounds of that stuff is about $20. So it's a significant savings by using pool filter sand from Home Depot, Lowe's, or any other hardware store. It's made by Quickcrete, I think is the brand that I buy. And... We're just gonna put down a nice little base level here. Gonna get this stuff pushed around into the corners. We wanna just get the entire bottom full. We're not gonna do any kind of like shaping, anything like that. It's just simply going to be getting this stuff down in here. One thing that we will be doing is we will be planting some great plants. Now I will tell you, we will be using a lot of different products from API today. Number one, starting with some API root tabs. Now, you don't put them in like this because that would just be terrible. What we're going to do is open up this package and we're going to put these into the sand. I broke these up into small little pieces and we're just going to place these ever so apart right here in the bottom of this tank like this. And that is because we will be, in fact, planting this tank. The thing about this substrate is it has absolutely zero nutritional value for any kind of plants. So we use this 
for our root feeding plants. Things like Amazon swords, broadleaf Ludwigia, you know, stem plants that are rooted. Anything that has a root system on it that gets planted in the substrate for the most part is going to feed off of the roots. Any of your floating plants are going to feed from the water column. So now that we have these kind of pushed down in here, we're just going to kind of cover them up. And this will help our root feeding plants be able to survive in this setup. Since, like I said, there is zero nutritional value in this particular type of substrate. Normally what I would do is I'd use some planted substrate. Now that we have our base level set up, what we want to do is start focusing on our decor. Now what we'll be using is this modern decor setup that I bought at a local big box pet store. We may use all the elements, we may not use them all. So starting with this geometrical little house here, this thing is kind of cool. It'll be nice for a betta to swim in and out. Little fake bronze statue here of a flamingo or something like that. Some sort of geometrical shape kind of thing and another geometrical shape kind of thing. So we're gonna place these things in here, but first I wanna start by figuring out where they're gonna go. So I think what I wanna do is I'm gonna use this guy right here and kind of build up the substrate just a little bit for this to sit up on top of. So let's go ahead and put some substrate in here. Now what we wanna kind of do back here is I wanna add one of these structures kind of back here in the corner a little bit. I'm gonna bury this in the sand just a bit, just to kind of give it a little bit of a buried look, like it's coming out of the ground. And this structure is actually gonna be used to hide our filtration system. So we're gonna put that guy right there. Let me twist it just a little bit. As far as a filter goes, we're gonna be using a standard sponge filter. Now granted there are no sponges on this, but you can pick these up at my website, freshwaterscrub.com. Use the code BETA for 10% off, as well as I could put some of these fake plants in here like this, or even this guy here. But I don't know that I'm gonna use these plants. I do want to use this other kind of geometric shape thing. Maybe we'll put this back here in the corner as well. Bury this thing right underneath this house like this. Kind of give it a cool little look there. Now we get to escape this thing. As you heard me talk about, my website, freshwaterscrub.com. I do sell a terrarium tool set that comes with a little brush like this. This is a part of the set on that website and you can pick those up. Use the code BETA for 10% off. I have limited supplies of these left, so you better get one before they're all gone. And these are great because you can do all of the kind of detailed stuff as you can see right here. I'm just fixing all of this substrate around the base of this house, pushing it up into the cracks and crevices and getting it kind of looking nice. We're going to use this as well. Get all of this substrate pushed down. And now we need to start cutting a path right here. What I want to do with this path is I'm going to put some rock in here to make kind of like a little stone pathway, which seems to be very modern, if you will. And we'll clean this up in just a minute once I get this rock in here. Some of you are probably like Chris, the fish doesn't need a stone pile. And you know what? You're absolutely right. But the aesthetic of this tank needs a stone path, so therefore we are going to give it a stone path. Now the next thing we're going to do, this is another cool thing. Now what we have here, these are cocoa fiber pads and we have little metal cages that look like this. These came off of another plant that's kind of why they kind of look dirty but we're gonna set this thing up to be really cool. And here's how we're gonna do that. We're gonna take this cocoa pad right here and we're actually gonna get this wet with some tank water. And we're gonna sit this right here and we're gonna lay on this right across the top of this, some of this amazing Christmas moss. This Christmas moss is also for sale at freshwaterscrub.com. What this does is this weights this stuff down and lets it grow into a really nice luscious mat inside of your aquarium. So we're gonna fill this thing completely up with this moss till it's completely packed full of it. We're gonna take this cage, we're gonna place it right over top of this, push this down in here. We'll bend these edges right up over the sides. We have a nice big mat. Now we will take this and we will place this somewhere in here inside of this tank where we want some sort of a grass effect. And we just kind of bury this mat 
down in the ground just a little bit and now we will have a nice little grass pad right here in the tank that will start to grow over time it'll actually grow up out of that turning into a beautiful mat we can then cut it and have more of it. As you can see, I grow tons of this stuff. This stuff is for sale at freshwaterscrub.com, so make sure you pick some up. Now that we have that in place, we're gonna pick up all of these remnants. Never waste your plant remnants. Throw them in a tank somewhere. We're gonna put these in the guppy setup over here because that stuff will continue to grow and we'll actually you know, at one point or another be able to get some out of there as well so we now have a grass mat here we're going to finish this little stone path now that we know where our grass is going to be sitting over here and we're going to place our little copper flamingo right here in the front of the tank all right well now that we have all of this set up it's time to plant our stem plants so let's go ahead and get those we're gonna start with some Italian Val. Now, I love Val's, Jungle Val's probably my favorite, but Italian Val is gonna be great for this particular setup because Italian Val is more of a thin Val. And we're gonna stuff this right back in here around the back of this. It gives a nice little wispy kind of flow. We'll put a little more back here in this corner behind our little geometrical kind of thing here. Add a little bit of rock back here over top of the root system of that valve just to hold it down to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. Now we're gonna use some of this Broadleaf Ludwigia and Broadleaf Ludwigia is another great plant, easy to care for, grows super well in moderate lighting. We're gonna add some Bacopa on this side. Bacopa is another great plant that grows really well. We're gonna add a couple of these little red crips. We now have this thing set up and it is time to get water in this thing. Well, let's first, let's get it moved to where it's gonna go and get this thing full of water. All right, this thing is sitting here where it's gonna go and we need to fill this thing up. But before we do, we need to dechlorinate our water. And we're gonna be using one of our favorite dechlorinators, API Stress Coat Plus. Right here, we're gonna go ahead and dechlorinate this water directly in the bucket that we're gonna be using to fill this thing. So we now have that filled up. We're gonna scoot this tank up just a little bit so I can get access to the sponge filter. And we are gonna hook this thing up. This entire rack is full of everything we need as far as heat, aeration, all of that. So we're gonna pull this sponge filter out. Now I am taking fully cycled sponges out of the setups over here. So this thing is completely cycled and ready to go. I think we're going to set it to purple. Looks good. Okay, so now that the light's on here, everything is good. We have lighting up here for our tank, which will take care of all of these plants, letting them grow. But check this thing out, guys. I mean, I think it turned out pretty well, right? It's definitely modern. It'd be really cool when this grass kind of grows in right there, but everything is looking good. Now what we need to do is make a decision on what betta fish is going to go in here. Now you guys know that I rescued all of these betta fish from a dumpster. And what, like I said in the beginning of this, people thought it was fake, but in fact, it is not fake. These are real. They are down here. We did lose two of them. We had 12 total. We now are down to 10. We're gonna take a look at every single one of them and get status on those, and I'm gonna need some assistance from you guys. Let's just go ahead and take a look at these guys and see how they're doing. All right, guys, well, let's take a look at all of these rescue bettas. So we actually lost only two of them, and we are down to 10, and they're all looking good. So what I wanna do is take a closer look. This is betta number one. It's a nice little red betta. And these are just standard bettas. They're not really anything special. Number two. And this guy's actually a red betta, but he's gotten a purple hue to it. Kind of white body. It's a super cool one. Betta number four. Moving into the blue ones, we have betta number five. Number six. Number seven. Number eight. Number nine. And finally, this guy who is completely changed colors after I started feeding. Number 10. 
So that is all 10 of our bettas, starting with 1 through 10. So make sure you comment below and let me know which one of these bettas you would like to see go into this new modern tank right here. This tank is fully cycled. Everything's doing well in here. The water's completely cleared up. And I want you guys to choose which one of these bettas are going to go into this tank. The rest of them will all end up being adopted out. So make sure you comment and let me know which one we want to keep in the fish room. And what I will do is I'll make sure that in the next video we put that fish into this tank but before we get out of here I want to talk about a couple things real quick like number one you see those right there I don't know if you can see those here let's take a closer look what I want you to see here is all of these guppy fry. There are so many guppy fry in this setup right here. We're gonna come over to this next one and there are guppy fry in this one too. All kinds of guppy fry in here. So let's go ahead and feed these guys some API tropical fish flake and get these guys fed in here real quick. We'll feed each one of these tubs just a little bit of this fish flake they love this stuff so hopefully that'll keep them from trying to eat their young now that they have some food in here these bettas absolutely love api betta pellets all right guys well hopefully you went on to enjoy this video today and make sure you pick comment below the number of betta fish you think that should go into this new modern aquarium pick between one and ten comment as many times as you want below make sure you let me know so we can put that betta fish into this tank in the next video but with that guys i'm truly grateful so thank you very very much for coming and watching today make sure you're subscribed and turn on that notification bell follow us on facebook and instagram links to both are down below and as i've been saying in the last few videos something big's coming in the garage because it's well we're in our two weeks of fall time in texas right now and temperature's starting to dip and we got to find a place for all these tropical fish so videos coming soon on that stay tuned guys i love each and every one of you Thank you, thank you, thank you, and hey, we will see you next time.